Uh, Wilfred, I think it all, all has to do really with, with the Fed and the Fed's uh, unbelievable action that it took uh, on March 23rd and then again on April 9th. Uh, you know, Bill Ackman, who you mentioned, who made $2.6 billion in three weeks, uh, he basically he was playing the Fed. He was essentially betting that the Fed would do something like it did. Uh, obviously, he didn't know what it would do, but he felt that something like what the Fed did, which was literally flood the zone, much more quickly than they ever did in 2008. Uh, you know, and so uh, he was one big winner. Uh, people who bet correctly that we had a huge number of over-leveraged companies uh, in this country, uh, they bet that those companies would have trouble. Uh, they bet correctly. Unfortunately, the Fed took action, and they got completely, uh, their positions got swamped. So those people who played the Fed were, bet, were the big winners. Those people who bet the economy and over leverage, unfortunately, uh, have lost so far. Bill, you know, you're a big thinker, and you start your column with, the invisible killer is testing global capitalism as never before. What, what ultimately do you think is going to be the, the product of all of this? Some of these, these examples that you're describing, the, the way the relief packages were crafted, the way the markets are behaving, where, where does this leave us off? Well, you know, obviously, Sarah, if I, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't be talking to you at quarter of five on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. I'd be on an island somewhere. But Look, what I are think you saying? What, what, the, what, the Fed, what the Fed did in, two, in 2008 and what the Fed did again uh, 12 years later really begins to uh, require us to think about what, what kind of economy have we begun, become. Uh, we've become an economy that really can't survive a serious downdraft except for the Fed stepping in and rescuing. Uh, uh, this is hardly free market capitalism. This is some sort of form of rescue capitalism uh, that the Fed is engineered twice now. now. Now, let's stipulate that the Fed was created in 1913 to be a lender of last resort, a, a role that used to be played by J.P. Morgan, the man. But obviously, that man did not live forever, and the Fed replaced that man. And so the Fed is doing what it's supposed to do as the lender of last resort. But between 2008 and what happened now, it's clear that without the Fed playing that hugely important role, there'd be carnage beyond anything we can all, are already experiencing, which, by the way, is bad enough. So do you think the Fed is going to end up taking blame for the inequality that we're going to face? Well, I mean, I think the Fed deserved some of uh, its share of blame for, you know, keeping quantitative easing uh, going too long, uh, creating what I call this sort of morphine drip where everybody is uh, a giddy, uh, reaching for yield and taking all kinds of risks that weren't appropriate. If you look, one of my favorite charts, Sarah, is, you know, the high-yield bond index chart. If you look at it from mid-February, high-yield bonds were yielding 5 percent because, you know, investors were just taking all these kinds of crazy risks, thinking that, that uh, everything was priced for perfection. Then this begins to happen. The high-yield bond index shoots up to 11.5 percent, beginning to reflect the kind of risks and, and rewards that investors should receive for the risk they're taking. And now it's, you know, seven and change, reflecting the, the, the flooding of the market that the Fed's created here. So the Fed has created this moral hazard. It's obviously doing what it has to do. But, you know, you have to ask yourself, what have we become? What has capitalism in, in the early 21st century become? Because twice now we've had to be rescued by the Fed. And that's not the same as free market capitalism. Don't anybody think that it is? It's very, very different. And we're not quite sure what the ramifications of that are.